Hey, welcome to this week's episode of Sticky Note Marketing. This is your, basically your weekly show to give you actionable tips in order to grow your business, reach your audience, and elevate your growth faster, simpler, and easier. So if this is your first time joining us, I'm Mary Zarnecki. I am your host and marketing expert. I am excited to share with you the topic I've got planned for today, which is about how to stand out. So I was struck by this stat, the statistics that I came across from McKinsey the other day, that basically 75% of consumers have switched brands at least once in the past year since the, the COVID pandemic kicked in. So you might be facing new competition. Maybe it's the same competition. Maybe they're trying some new tactics, or maybe you've got new entrants that are going to be in the consideration set for your target audience this year. So it is more essential now, even more than ever, um, to make sure that we are maintaining that relevancy. How are you standing out? How are you staying relevant? How are you standing out from the crowd and staying out of what we call the sea of sameness, kind of that snake pit of sameness where you know, you don't seem very different from a substitute or a competitor and your target audience is basically, you know, going to go one way or the other. So I want to share today some of the questions that I work with my clients on when we're talking about how to get their brands to stand out, how to create difference, how to create recognizability, irresistibility. So these are the four questions that I work through with my clients uh, and wanted to share some of those with you today. Now, obviously, we usually go more in depth with all of these. Um, and actually there's a set of 10 that we work through, but these are the four that I think are the most actionable. So that's why I wanted to share this with you today. All right. So number one question you need to ask yourself about your business is, is my messaging resonating with my target audience? So looking at how are you talking on social media, in your emails, in your advertising, in your website, all of your copy, all of your messaging, is it resonating with your target audience? Are you speaking their language? Now, in order to speak their language, you have to have a deep understanding of your target audience. So if you haven't done that, that's definitely the first step, getting into their mind, figuring out what is the conversation that's going on in their head and entering that conversation in their language. If you're not doing that, if you're not seeing that engagement and you know that messaging resonating with the people that you want to be bringing into your business, that is a key place to start because no amount of ad spend is gonna fix bad messaging and bad positioning. So that's the first thing we usually fo focus on is thinking about, are you speaking their language? Are you entering the conversation that's already going on in their head? So number two is gonna be, is my brand visible? So can people find me? How easy, if you weren't aware of your business, how easy is it for someone to find you learn more about what you do, what you offer, what you sell, and buy from you. You would be shocked how many people I've worked with, both big brands and small, that make it difficult for people to give them money. We need to look at it from outside our perspective. We're sometimes so close to our business that we're not looking at the consumer's experience. What is their experience? finding out about us, learning about us. What, can they clearly see what it is you do and offer? And is it easy to then decide yes and say yes and give you money to work with you? So looking at that is definitely gonna be a very easy switch. If you can make some small changes there, ease that buyer's journey, uh, you can see big revenue shifts in your business very, very quickly. So one other thing about visibility before I get into number three is are you sick of hearing yourself talk yet? So again, yes, you wanna make it easy on them, but it's also about this repetition and this consistency. So if you are sick of hearing yourself talk about certain topics, the things that you're an expert and authority in, if you're not sick of hearing yourself talk about them, you're not talking about it enough. We think that our audience is listening to everything we say, every email we put out, every post, and they're not. So only a small fraction of our messages are getting through the noise that they're seeing every day. So we wanna make sure that that repetition is in place as part of that visibility strategy. Now, number three, uh, and again, if you're just uh, catching up here, I'm gonna be sharing the four questions. So this is number three. So number three is, am I delivering exceptional service to my customers, the people who have bought from me, my clients, the ones who have said, yes, you win, <laughs> here's my money, do your thing. So 
are you giving them an amazing experience? What is your delivery process like? You know, how do you reward them? What is your customer service like? So another stat, just because I'm a little bit of a stats geek. So 54% of customers have higher expectations now than ever before for customer service. So they have said in this report that basically customers are saying, yeah, over 50% of them are saying, yep, I have higher expectations now. I want greater service, not less. So they're looking for this customer service, this level of delight. But how do we actually deliver exceptional customer service? How do we create these delightful moments unless we know what is delightful? So again, it goes back to that understanding of your target audience. You have to understand what is delightful to create a moment of delight for your audience. So looking at how are you treating the people who have said yes, who've, who've signed up to work with you, to buy from you, how are you treating them? And are you continuing the journey with them once you've gotten them into your, into your world, into your business? So it's way more expensive to get new people into your business, right? To acquire new customers or new consumers than it is to retain. So we always want to be looking at that. Are we ex expressing basically thanks? Are we rewarding them? Are we delivering that exceptional service? Now, if you are getting triggered by anything I'm sharing today, I would definitely invite you. Let's continue the conversation. I'm going to post the link to my Facebook group. I would love to have you in there. Uh, it's a great combination of both uh, corporate executive professionals as well as small business owners and entrepreneurs. And we can continue the conversation on maybe going a little more in depth on some of these questions. So I'll put the link to my uh, simple savvy marketing group, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you there. All right, so number four, last but not least, remember we said, is your messaging resonating with your target? Number two, is your brand visible? Is your business visible? And is it easy to find out more about you and buy from you? Number three, are you delivering this exceptional service, this level of delight for the people who have said yes to you? Who are your buyers? Who are your clients? Who are your consumers? Now, four is going to be, are your values clear? And do they resonate? Are they meaningful to your target audience? So again, another stat, 71% of consumers have said that they prefer buying from brands and companies and businesses aligned with their values. Now, does that mean you have to, to go out and basically wave some flag that you're not a believer in? No. But if you do have specific values in your organization and your brand and your business, sharing that magnetizes, attracts the people who share those values. And these consumers, these customers, these clients want to spend money, want to build relationships and invest in businesses that align with their values. So that means that there are going to be some people that are going to be repelled if you start sharing those messages, if you start sharing what you stand for and what, who you stand with, because that also will tell them who you stand against. And that's okay. It's okay to repel people that are not right for your business because that frees up more time, energy, and resources for you to spend on the people who are right. So those are the four questions. Again, I would love to continue the conversation over in our Facebook group. I'm gonna put the link there. So jump in, and I'm also gonna be giving everyone who jumps into the Facebook group a free welcome gift. So make sure to leave your email so I can send that over to you as part of our welcome package to the group. And let's talk about how are we going to get your business, your brand, maybe it's even a personal brand, standing out from the competition and escaping that snake pit of sameness this year. All right, I'll see you on next week's episode.